It's what's inside that counts. Don't judge a book by its cover. We've all been raised on these little mantras, but I've built my dissertation around it. You see, almost every living thing, including you, is home to millions of bacterial cells living in and on the various parts of our bodies, forming communities called microbiomes. The gut microbiome, researchers have found that this community in your gut regulates gut health, but also aspects of your brain, including behavior and even cognitive ability. So humans are interested in studying animal microbiomes to model these relationships with human health. I'm more interested in studying animal microbiomes for the animal's sake, because these communities can explain variation in individual animal survival and even behavior response to environmental change, like urbanization or global climate change, which are only going to get worse with time. So for my dissertation, I am studying the understudy, bird bacteria. My goal is to understand how a bird's gut microbiome relates to, and may actually influence, its brain. First, I sampled the gut microbiome of our captive population of zebrafishes to figure out what's up there. Right? And then I measured their performance on various cognitive tasks. And I found that birds that solve these tasks faster, they have different microbiome characteristics than those that solve them more slowly. And my slower solvers had a relatively higher pathogen abundance. So cool, what does that mean? Were my smarter birds smarter because of their microbiome? It turns out stress is a big mediator in this gut-brain relationship because it impacts cognitive performance negatively, which we have all felt, but it also can trigger an immune response, spelling trouble for the microbiome. So maybe my dumb birds were actually just more stressed out. So my next step was to test the impact of stress on the health and microbiome of a wild population of northern cardinals. And I found that birds with a more diverse gut microbiome, they were healthier. Better body condition, lower baseline stress hormone levels, and even a less dramatic stress response. And they were sexier, having more elaborate beak and feather coloration used in sexual ornamentation in this species. Showing that beauty really is more than skin deep. Because it's tough to measure cognition in a wild population, I am now back in the lab for my final experiment, again with our captive zebrafinch population, Yay. testing the impacts of a well-validated stress treatment, extended social isolation. Now, I'm testing the impacts of that on their gut microbiome, sexual limitation, and cognitive performance. And zebrafinches are like us. They're social species, just like humans. So we humans know from my time during COVID that extended social isolation from, uh, from quarantine can be very, very difficult. Not a lot of fun, right? The world is full of stressful situations, whether it's the traffic on I-95 or this competition, <laughs> and understanding the impacts that stress has on those, those most important to us can really have lasting effects, both inside and out.